Welcome to our classroom. First, let us start with a prayer. Lord Jesus, I pray today that you multiply your grace on me, subtract and take away all of my sins by your mercy you have shed on me. Add to my awareness a better understanding of your will for me in my life. I will divide my blessings and grace with those that are not as fortunate as I am. In your perfect and most holy name, I come to you, Jesus, and ask these things. Amen. Hello everyone, welcome back. Once again, I'm your teacher, Maria Eliza N. Nunez. Our objective for, the, for this week's lesson is to convert measurements from one unit to another in both metric and English systems. Number two, solve problems involving conversion of units of measurement. Let's start with this activity. Measure the length of the following items located in the classroom or your room. Since we're not in the classroom, so you're going to use your room. Using centimeters, record your findings. After doing that, use the conversion chart to convert it from centimeter to another units. When changing from smaller units to larger units, the number of units will be, and vice versa. Apply what you learn to other metric units too. You can also estimate how tall you are by feet. And here are the following units of measure. We have here the metric system and the English system. For the quantity, we have length, volume, mass, temperature, time, capacity, and angle. So for quantity of the length using the metric, we have millimeter, centimeter, kilometer. And for the English system, we have inch, foot, yard, mile. For the volume, you can have cubic, centimeter, cubic, meter. For the metric system and for the English system you have cubic inch, cubic foot, cubic yard. For mass we have for the metric we have gram and kilogram. Then we have for the English you have ounce, pound and ton. And for the temperature we have for the metric we have Kelvin and the degree Celsius. For the English we have the degree Fahrenheit. And for the time, you have second, minute, hour. And for the English system, you have again second, minute, hour. It's the same for the metric and the English system for the time. For capacity, you have milliliter and liter. That's for the metric. And for the English system of capacity, you have fluid ounce, tint, gallon. And for the angle, using... Metric in English, they have the same degree and region. Okay, knowing those metric and English system, this is the first task you need to do. Identify the appropriate unit of measure that can be used to the following quantities. We have here the table, handkerchief, ice cream, ball pen, Distance of your place to Manila, baking cake, balikbayan box, and size of the shoes. Here is what we call the conversion line or the meter line. On the middle of that conversion line or the meter line, we have what we call the unit or the basic unit. So we have the meter for letter M. Here it is. The liter for letter L and gram for letter G. Then, as you can see, we have the K, H, D, 
then another on the right side we have DCM so on the left side those can be called kilometer hectometer decameter while on the right side of the basic unit we have decimeter centimeter and millimeter it's the same if you have the liter you can call it kiloliter hectoliter decaliter deciliter centiliter milliliter the same with the gram we can have kilogram hectogram decagram decigram centigram milligram so that's how you use this meter line this is the basic step for you to convert the metric system when you go from the left and from the light, right okay let's see here okay for the first example we're going to convert 89 meter to millimeter from meter we move three decimal places to the right three decimal places to the right then add zeros since we have whole number so your decimal point is at the end of that whole number so you have 89 point then you need to move that decimal point three places so you have add, you have to add three zeros so your answer will be 89,000 millimeter. So the 89 meter when converted to millimeter will become 89,000. That's the use of the conversion line or meter line. Another example, you have 740 decimeter to hectometer. Again, this is a whole number and you need to move three decimal places this time to the left. So, it means when I move to the right, my number becomes larger. But when I move to the left, the number becomes smaller or it can become as a decimal number. As you can see here, our 740 decimeter, when converted to hectometer, become 0.740 hectometer. Or you can also have it as 0.74 hectometer. It's the same. And for the last example, 7.8 kilogram to decagram. By the way, our decagram or the decameter, decaliter can be used as DAM, but this time I use DKG. It's the same. Because some books use K, some books use A. Okay, we have 7.8 kilogram to decagram so our decimal is between 7 and 8 and we need to move that two decimal places so your answer will be 780 decagram next 5,940 centigram to gram. Okay, again, you need to move that. Your answer will be 59.40 gram. Or 59.4 gram. And then we have 8.6 liter to milliliter. So you will move that again. Your answer will now become 8,600 milliliter just remember that when you move from the left it will become decimal when you move from the right it will become larger number but it's also depend on the decimal point where it is placed we're done with that metric system how about if i have metric to english or english to metric conversion Okay, if I have here converting inch to centimeter, to convert inch to centimeter, here are the number we need to multiply to each 
conversion. Okay, we will talk about it one by one. Inch to centimeter, you need to multiply 2.54 because 1 inch is equal to 2.54 centimeter. And for the foot to centimeter, you have 1 feet is equal to 30.5 centimeter. The same with our yard. Our yard can be converted into meter and centimeter. So for the meter, you will have 1 yard is equal to 0.914 meter. And for the centimeter, 1 yard is equal to 91.4 centimeter. We have here for the mile. When you want to convert mile to kilometer, you have 1 mile is equal to 1.61 kilometer and when we have centimeter to inch you have one centimeter is equal to 0.4 inch and then for the meter it can be converted into inch feet yard so let us start with inch one meter is equal to 39.4 inch one meter is equal to 3.28 feet 1 meter is equal to 1.1 yard. And for the kilometer to miles, you have 1 kilometer is equal to 0.62 miles. So those are the things you need to remember when converting those units from each other. Okay, we have here some examples. What is 4.2 inches in centimeters? So we're going to solve it now. What is 4.2 inches in centimeter? Here. Okay. I need to convert that inches into centimeter. Knowing that 1 inch is equal to 2.54 centimeter. So we will have 4.2 times 2.54 we will multiply 4.2 times 2.54 so that will be equal to 10.67 centimeter Next, if we have what is 10.5 meter in yards, knowing that 1 meter is equal to 1.1 yards. So, we need to multiply again 10.5, 10.5, And since our goal is to convert 10.5 meter into yards, we need to multiply knowing that 1 meter is equal to 1.1 yards. So 10.5 times 1.1, that will be equal to 11.55 yards. So that is our answer on the second question. Next. Three yards of ribbon will be cut into seven equal pieces. But the question is, how long in centimeters is each piece? So first, we need to convert the 3 yards into centimeter. Knowing that 1 yard is equal to 91.4 centimeter. We have 3 yards to centimeter. So we will multiply 3 by 91.4. So our answer will be 
274.2 cm. 274.2 cm. But, it says here, it need to be cut into 7 equal pieces. For us to know how long each in centimeter. So, we need to divide this 274.2 into 7. And that will be equal to 274.2 centimeter into 7 so per piece you will have 39.17 centimeter so that's the answer on our question number 3 next we have here units of volume can be also changed from one unit to another using the metric converter again those that line that we have, that kilometer, hectometer, decameter, then the basic unit, then we have centimeter, centimeter, millimeter. But to use that this time, since we are converting volume, this time the decimal point is moved thrice the number of steps between units since volume involves three dimensions. So, to convert 96.58 cubic centimeter to cubic meter, we all know that we need to count two steps to the left. Move the decimal point two steps to the left, but it says we need to do it thrice. So, that two step will be multiplied to three. So, you have two times three equals six. So, instead of two places to the left, you will move now six places to the left. So the 96.58 cubic centimeter when converted into cubic meter will become 0 0.00009658 cubic meter. We have here another table. Convert teaspoon to milliliter. 1 teaspoon is equal to 5 milliliter. Tablespoon to milliliter, 1 tablespoon is equal to 15 milliliter. Fluid ounce, 1 fluid ounce is equal to 30 milliliter. Cup to liter, 1 cup is equal to 0.28 liter. Pint. Pint can be converted into liter, cup, quart. So we have for the liter first, one pint is equal to 0.47 liter. One pint is equal to two cups. One pint is equal to 0.5 quarts. And for the quart, it can be converted to liter, cup, pint. So we have one quart is equal to 0.95 liter, 1 quart is equal to 4 cups, 1 quart is equal to 2 pints. And for the gallon to be converted into liter, 1 gallon is equal to 3.8 liter. Okay, we have here some examples. How many liters is 16 cups of milk? So again, we need to solve that. How many liters is 16 cups of milk? Knowing that, 1 liter is equal to 0.28 cups. So we have, or rather 1 cup is equal to 0.28 liter. So we have 16 times 0.28 so 16 times 0.28 here we're solving it now 16 times 0.28 the answer will be 4.48 liter 
So that is the answer now, 4.48 liter. So that means in 16 cups, you have 4.48 liters of milk. Next, a bottle of calf syrup contains 5 fluid ohms. If you are going to drink the medicine and the doctor prescribe 5 milliliter 3 times a day, how many days you are going to drink one bottle of medicine? We have here 5 fluid ohms. But the question is, your doctor prescribed 5 milliliter. So we need to convert it first. Our 5 fluid ohms should be converted into milliliter. So it will be multiplied to 30. And 5 times 30 is equal to 150. So you will have now 150 milliliter. And the doctor asks you to drink 3 times a day. It means once, once a day is 5 milliliter and 3 times a day is 15 milliliter. So this 150 should be divided into 15 for us to know how many days you're going to drink that one bottle of medicine. So if we have 150 divided by 15, the answer now is 10 days. So it means that bottle of medicine can be done by 10 days. So that is our final answer. Next. In your village, the garbage collectors collector collects 980 kilogram of garbage every day. The question is how many metric ton of garbage in 30 days can they collect? We all know that one metric ton is equal to 1,000 kilogram. Therefore, 980 kilogram should be divided into 1,000. So you will have 0.98 tons. Meaning to say, every day they are collecting 0.98 tons. But the question is, for 30 days, how many metric tons did they collect? So you have 0.98 times 30. Therefore, your answer will be 29.4 tons of garbage. That's the number of tons they collect within 30 days. Next, we have here the conversion of temperature from Fahrenheit to Celsius, Celsius to Fahrenheit, and Celsius to Kelvin. We have here Fahrenheit to Celsius. Degree Celsius is equal to 5 over 9 quantity degree Fahrenheit minus 32. Celsius to Fahrenheit, we have degree Fahrenheit is equal to 9 over 5 times degree Celsius plus 32. Celsius to Kelvin, you have K is equal to degree Celsius plus 273. Let us have some example. A butter melts at 31 degree Celsius while a candle melts at about 55 degrees Celsius. How much higher is the melting point of candle in Fahrenheit? So we need to solve that. Since it asks how much higher, we need to subtract first that 55 degrees Celsius to 31 degrees Celsius before we convert it into Fahrenheit because the question is in Fahrenheit. So 55 degree Celsius minus 31 degree Celsius is equal to 24 degree Celsius. And we need to convert that now into degree Fahrenheit. Okay, on the formula, 
formula I have there as a fraction, we can also have that formula into decimal. So we will be using the decimal form. So we have degree Fahrenheit is equal to 1.8. The 9 over 5 will become 1.8 multiply to 24 plus 32. Following the formula that we have, we just change it into the decimal. So we have 1.8 times the 24, which is the given degree Celsius, plus the 32. So your final answer will be 75.2 degree Fahrenheit. Okay, just take note, by doing it, you need to follow 1.8 times 24 first before adding it to the 32 to get the 75.2 degree Fahrenheit. So that will be the answer. Next. The recipe for a certain cake to be baked in an oven calls for a 475 degree Fahrenheit temperature. If your oven is set in degree Celsius, what should be your temperature setting? So first, that 475 should be, the only thing we need to do is to convert it into degree Celsius. Okay, so 475 degree Fahrenheit should be converted into degree Celsius. Again, following the decimal formula, we have the 5 over 9. That 5 over 9 can become 0.56. So we're going to use that 0.56 times times the 475 minus 32. Okay, this time you need to first subtract 475 to 32 before you multiply it to our point 56. So our final answer will be 248.08 degrees Celsius. Or you can round it off into 250 degrees Celsius. So you need to set your oven into this 250 degree Celsius. Next. Okay, for the time, we have here 60 seconds is equal to 1 minute. We all know that. 60 minutes is equal to 1 hour. 24 hours is equal to 1 day. 12 months is equal to 1 year. 365 days is equal to 1 year. 366 days is equal to 1 leap year. 10 years is equal to 1 decade. 20 years is equal to 1 score. 100 years is equal to 1 century. 1,000 years is equal to 1 millennium. So those are the conversion of time. Okay, let us have some example. I have here 7 days, seconds. Okay, 7 days to seconds, you have 7 days. Of course, you will start with converting it into R minute seconds. Because the question is into seconds. So you need to multiply that. 7 days, quantity 24 hours over 1 day. Then another 60 minutes over 1 hour. Then another 60 seconds over 1 minute. Cancel all that unit, day, hour, minute. The remaining will be seconds. And you need to multiply all numbers on the numerator. So you need to multiply 7 times 24 times 60 times 60. So the answer is 604,800 seconds. So that will be the seconds in 7 days. Next, 4 hours, 45 minutes, 2 minutes. Okay, 
Don't mind first the 45 minutes. Let's focus on 4 hours to be converted into minutes first. So 4 hours into minutes. We all know that in 1 hour, there are 60 minutes. So just multiply 4 times 60. You have 240 minutes. And then finally add that 45 minutes to that 240. So therefore you have 285 minutes minutes that's the final answer next is the angle angle is formed by two rays intersecting at a point called the vertex of the angle we have three kinds of angles for now so we have acute angle acute angle measures less than 90 degree right angle measures exactly 90 degree Obtuse angle measures greater than 90 degree but less than 180 degree. So you need to remember that because you're going to name some angles if it is acute, right, or obtuse. Okay, we have here your next task, learning task 2. Convert to the indicated unit of measure. This one, numbers 1 to 10. And the following is, identify what kind of angle with a given measure are the following. So uh, this is what I'm saying a while ago. You need to identify if it is acute angle, right angle, or obtuse angle. And your afternoon activity will be problem solving, this one. Solve the following. For number one, Elise has 20 meters of ribbon. How many 15 centimeters of ribbon can be cut from it? For number two, Mr. JB has a rectangular lot that measures 550 meters by 4.75 kilometers. What is the area of the land in square meters? He is selling the whole lot for 206,250,000 pesos. How much is the price per square meter? For number three, drinking eight glasses of water a day is good for your health. If each glass of water is equivalent to 148 milliliter, how many liters of water you need to consume every day? Number four, your baby brother has a body temperature of 1000 degree Fahrenheit. What is his body temperature in degree Celsius? Does he has a normal body temperature? For number 5, your mother asks you to buy 2.5 kilo kilogram of sugar. Each pack of sugar in the store weighs 250 grams. How many packs of sugar will you buy? Number 6, the 120 grams powdered milk Make 12 cups of milk. How many kilograms of powdered milk can produce 60 cups of milk? How many liters is 60 cups of milk? For number 7, we have here a table. Since you have 8 modules to study in a day, your teacher gave you this schedule for 5 days from Monday to Friday. So you have subject, then the number of minutes. Math, Science, English, Filipino, MAPE, EPP, ESP. So Math, you have 45, Science, 40, English, 40, Filipino, 35, MAPE, 30, EPP, 30, ESP, 25. Those are the number of minutes you need to spend to those subjects. And here are the three questions to that table. How many hours in a day you spend studying all these subjects? Next, if you will add the number of minutes you spend in each subject in one week, how many hours you spend in one week for each subject? Each subject. So you need to compute those eight. How many hours for those eight subjects you spend? Your mother gives you 
2,700 seconds play time every day. How many minutes is your play time? So that is the last task. And since that's the last task, we all know that I always ask for this one. You need to make a reflection. Again, you can choose whatever you want kind of reflection. You can do video blog, narrative post, photo journal, or to your preferred reflective mode of documentation. Just don't forget to state these three statements. I learned that, I realized that, and I will do. Then we can finally say, madaling madali ang math, as simple as that. Once again, I'm your teacher, Maria Eliza N. Nunez, now signing off.